Hi guys. Right, different video, but I'm pretty sure that most of you that follow me um, will actually find this interesting. And um, it's well done, and I can't take credit for it. So the Canadian Down Syndrome um, YouTube might be their channel, I think, that I've got this from. So I have to shout out to them. But this is a new advert for disability in the sense of um, I have 22Q syndrome, there's Down syndrome, there's just as many Down syndrome as there is 22Q syndrome. And what I want to point out is how disabilities are perceived by people without the disability. Okay? And that that is frustrating for most of us because there is a spectrum of autism as much as there is spectrums of other conditions as well, guys. Like a spectrum is not just for autism only. Spectrums can come for Down syndrome. It can come for um, my 22Q syndrome. Um, just because I have a possibility list, um, even though I, I do have most of them, <laughs> unfortunately, but um, it doesn't mean that every person with my syndrome will have what I specifically have. Medically, mentally, physically, all of that, right? And it's the same with Down syndrome. They are like, I really relate to them, I think because of my autism. I really, really have always connected with them. I've always found it easy to in engage with them because we're all on the same, we're all on the same level there. We've had the same challenges, the same, the same like criticisms, the same struggles in some ways. Same, same, but different, if you know what I mean. I'm sure there's differences, but I'm just saying like there is a lot of similarities in just the disability side of it. Being that um, it's, I mean, 22Q for me, I will put up probably, actually I'll get a photo and I'll put it up in the um, community page of me when I looked my most 22Q face shaped, um, just to give you an idea of what a 22Q um, person tends to look like. Sorry about the unstable hands and the stupid head thing. It's, it's trendy, isn't it? <laughs> Shut up, sir. Hey guys, um, Epi Hunter. Yeah, that's just not Horrible even- Horrible EEG. Yeah, fun. Um, <laughs> annoying, but we do want to get results if there is results but if there isn't results well i guess that might be a good thing but anyway we already know that it happens before my big one but anyway this to me is so it's what my words can't say it's probably what a lot of people with down syndrome can't say and they need to be heard and i'd say that many of us with disability also need to be heard in a similar way to this so if i was to look back at school right I was limited, absolutely I was limited. Um, and I found that um, discriminatory, <coughs> I, I knew as a child I was being discriminated against because I'd look at all the other kids, excuse my puffy face too, I am really going through some stuff medically right now. Um, and basically I was discriminated against. I wasn't able to be with the mainstream kids and that was really, really tough and that didn't help me to learn better social skills. It didn't help me in so many ways. So I, when I saw this advert, I cried. Because it's me too. Even though their syndrome is different to mine, like I said, same, same, but different. Um, a lot of genetic syndromes have similarities and a lot of differences as well. But I want to show you this advert, and I hope this isn't copyright striked or anything like that, because this is for educational purposes to really like, I really want to honour their campaign that they've done. I think it's well done and I relate to it. So let's have a look, right? So let me show you the screen and let's just press play. It's 1 minute 30, but I'll probably stop him in the middle or well, during to talk about certain points being made and what I think of them and what the psychology of them is because it is well done so whoever the marketing team on here who you obviously actually you know what I know you've already done and this is what needs to happen in disability sectors sit with the very people you represent stop sitting with normal people and talking about someone's syndrome or condition or whatever it may be stop talk to the people 
that have it. End of story. That's my opinion on that. Not That's not going to change. But anyway, take a look at this, guys. It's brilliant. Hey, bartender. You assume that I cannot drink a margarita. So you don't serve me a margarita? So I don't drink a margarita. Your assumption becomes reality. And parents. You assume that I cannot live on my own. So you don't encourage me to live on my own. So I don't live on my own. Coach. You assume that I cannot hit harder, so you don't train me to hit harder, so I don't hit harder. And teacher, you assume... So, for the beginning bit, the theme is we are not given the same as other children. And we all know that the beginning years of our lives are our formative years. It's when our brain is its most plasticity that the I'm sure there's a version of that word that I should have used in that phrase but I'm having neurological difficulties part of my syndrome anyway what's going on here is if you tell someone I mean there's things like just basic 101 psychology if you say to a child you can't do that most likely depending on the child's personality their innate personality like if it was me, if he said, you can't do that, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah, that's me. But that's not every child. So you say that to another child, you're never going to be able to read. You're never going to be able to write. Then that might become their reality. Not cool, right? So why not give it a go with them? All of these assumptions is so common. Okay. And now I might not face the same thing about the bartender stuff and all that. However, I did in a different way. So she has Down syndrome. There's facial features even more obvious than my syndrome's facial features, okay? But I, with my syndrome, I am very petite. I'm very, very small. I know on camera it's very hard to get that. That um, You'd have to meet me in person um, to really get a gauge of that. But I'm just saying, like... I, if I was buying alcohol until I was into my 30s, I was still being asked for ID because of my stature being small, my frame being small, my face looking young. That has been connected to my 22Q. Absolutely. So the assumption was always, and same with things like being around friends, and this is coming up soon. Um, and... There's even more that I'm going to share, but that's just the first one. I didn't like the fact that the assumption of me doing the same thing as my peers, going and ordering a drink at the pub when we were all young, was not received the same for me as it was for them. And they would laugh at me, and it was a big joke, and it was funny, and I laughed with them. But guess what? Deep down, it hurt. Because deep down, I felt like I wasn't meant to be there. I wasn't meant to be at a nightclub. I wasn't meant to be at a pub. Because I looked too little and young to be drinking. So, I really relate to this. The assumptions do become your reality. You do take it on. That's just basic psychology. You get told it enough by teachers, parents, peers, um, society, like I said, you go to a bar, you're trying to order a drink and they look at you and they go, mm -mm, are you even allowed to be in here? Um, I remember going to a pub with my friend from school and her sister who is six years younger than us. She was 17. Anyway, a long time ago because I'm old. Um, and guess who got asked for ID? Not her. Me. Okay. Me. She was 17, so we would have been 23. Anyway, let's just keep watching. I'll make a few more points. Ready? Can you see? Cool. All good. I cannot learn Shakespeare. So, you don't teach me Shakespeare. Old MacDonald had a farm. So, I don't learn Shakespeare. E-I-O. E-I-O. Yeah. Hey, if all your assumptions become reality, then assume that I can drink a margarita. You can serve me a margarita. So I drink a margarita. I assume that I can live on my own. So I live on my own. I assume that I can hit harder. So I hit harder. 
assume that I can learn Shakespeare. So, who will these mortals be? I learned fucking Shakespeare. You assume I can't swear, right? Assume that I can't do that. Okay, you assume that I can swear, right? That I can't swear, sorry. Yeah, um, still till now, it still can happen. Um, more so 20s, 30s and earlier 40s. Um, however, my disability's gotten more severe. I don't tend to be in social settings as much unless it's with other disabilities. But I'm just gonna say this. I was always told, you can't swear. You look too sweet and innocent and little and tiny and, you know, to swear. And once again, <laughs> it's all funny, it's all... No. No. It's not fair. I can swear whenever I wish to, just like everybody else. But because of my syndrome making me extremely tiny, fatty to thrive, microcephaly, okay, a small head size, all these things that made me different to others physically, let alone them knowing what was affecting me in other ways. Um, it's just not cool, right? Now, a lot of you um, are probably going, wow, like, uh, yeah, I've only been told by, say, my grandparents, you know, don't swear or whatever else. Well, I was told by nearly every social setting I was in, you cannot swear. They all swore all of the time. I swore because of the way I was raised. I was raised not to kind of swear. So I don't swear often unless it's my Tourette's then, <laughs> well, forget it. But basically, I am not really a swearer, right? But when I would, I wasn't allowed, even though I did it way less than others. That is discrimination. So I really relate to this. And I really just am amazed at the detail that this advert has gone into because that is absolutely correct. Now, I must admit the Shakespeare thing, I totally agree with too, but there is a certain type of issue that I had in English literature um, when I read the book Animal Farm. It's not about animals, autistics, okay? So anyone younger than high school age about to enter your English literature phase, just know from me, shh, right? Animal Farm is about politics. Yeah, okay? Um, I argued with my English teacher for 20 minutes or more. I lost time. It kind of slipped my... Yeah, it was intense, but... um. At the time, they knew I was different. They knew something was wrong with me, but they didn't know the word autism. <laughs> but anyway, they were very accepting of me. But I'm just saying, very distressing, because I'm like, how can I have read this whole book as a dyslexic? Do you know how much work I put into that? I had to put so much more work. Everyone had finished the book ages before me. I took weeks and weeks and weeks. I think I even got an extension and I did it and I did the essay. And then the teacher goes, it's not about the animals. What? But the whole book only talks about animals. What do you mean? Anyway, so that can happen. So just know, just because you say to someone, you can do this, and they fail, accept the failing. Accept that that's their reach. That's where their, their level is. That's their potential. And give it another year. Give it another couple of years. Whatever. It doesn't mean it's like, especially with, with developmental delays, guys, especially with that, all right? It's a big deal. We get there in the end. But I'm just saying, sometimes that can be the opposite. Don't judge the person and say, well, I saw that advert and they say that you can do anything. Okay, no black and white here. There's plenty of grey, okay, with spectrum syndromes. Anyway, let's keep watching. Ready? It's about to finish. But I can go to parties. Then I can have sex. But I can be on stage. I assume that I can so maybe I will. So I assume that I can, so maybe I will. Well done. Um, I think that's just it's powerful, guys. It's powerful. And um, that's why I say that, yes, be cautious. Don't kind of go, oh, like I said, 
oh, well, you know, the advert said you could, so you have to, and I'm going to hold you to it. That's not how life works, okay? Everything is a spectrum. Everything, everyone has their own potential. Every autistic is different. Every autistic s struggle is different. Um, their sensory needs, um, what senses bug them, or what senses don't bug them, um, what their special interests are can vary massively. Um, how they learn. Um, not everyone with autism has, like for example, I know with myself, I've got three learning disabilities. Not everyone with autism has. I have autism because of 22Q, which involves a lot of intellectual stuff and a lot of um, developmental delays and deformities of my body and like including my brain. And there's a lot of differences between autistics, right? There's a lot of coexisting conditions and coexisting comorbidities etc so great advert shout out to um whoever made that advert whoever was involved and i'm pretty sure it would have been people with down syndrome and good on you guys like you got your message out there and i'm so glad that someone took the time to speak to you about you because this is what's not happening I'm tired of it in Australia. No one ever asks me what I need. It's always they ask my doctors, my OTs, my carers, whatever. And that's fine. That's not a problem. But we still got a long way to go. Because I'd still like to be asked sometimes. And sometimes I don't get asked. Because when I'm in appointments and I have a guardian because I can't communicate well, and it's vital that communication happens because it could be life and death for me. So it's like I have to have the technical stuff done and then I have to put the input on because this is my body. I'm talking about my body, so I have to put my input in. But then I take too long to explain things or I get stuck on something or I can't communicate it because I don't know how to. Okay, it's messy. And so they want to just talk to my carer only or they want to talk to me only. And it's just, it's a nightmare. And... Most of the time, it's they don't want to talk to me. That's my point. Um, medical practitioners just don't care to take the time for people with disability. And wouldn't you think, yes, I know you're probably thinking, but it's the medical sector. They know everything about disability. No, they are the most ablest sector ever, or apart from anyone. Lay people on the street treat me with more respect as a disabled person than when I go to hospital. Yeah, that's Australia. I don't know about other countries, but that's Australia. So keep asking the people with the syndrome, with the condition, with the whatever, okay? Don't ask just the people who study it and, and the OTs, the occupational therapists, I'm talking about the speech therapists, the neuropsych, the carers. Okay, we need to get back to ask them. What do they want? I know in high school I was limited, but I made up for that later. <laughs> and when I went to my 10 year reunion for high school, I was the only girl that went to university. And I was the only girl with a disability in my group. Anyway guys, keep aiming high and never let anything hold you back. Like I said, even if you can't right now, try again later. Try again later. Love you all. Bye.